because dark matter doesn't interact easily with regular protons and electrons, Fermilab has frozen the germanium pucks to near sub-zero temperatures. If a dark matter particle comes through and hits a nucleus, it will actually change the temperature of the crystal very slightly. And so we're looking for that tiny change of temperature in the crystal to signal that a dark matter particle has passed by. 16 germanium pucks sit in a chamber inside a clean room. So we're suited up. We're about to go into the experimental room. It's a class 10,000 clean room. That's why we're all suited up, so we don't carry in any dust, because that would cause a background for the experiment. So let's go inside. So we have scintillation counters that are catching any cosmic ray particles that get all the way down underground here. So right here is what keeps our experiment cold, that tiny little bit above absolute zero. This is a dilution refrigerator. So way inside here are the germanium and silicon detectors. So we're just waiting for a, a wimp, a dark matter particle, to get down to this depth and hit one of those germanium and silicon crystals that's buried way inside all this shield. Fermilab has been visiting the mine for nearly two years, trying to capture dark matter. This is far harder than it sounds. Although billions of particles are passing through Earth at one time, it's a one in a million shot dark matter will interact with ordinary matter. Getting a dark matter particle to hit a germanium atom is like an archer trying to hit a bullseye when the target is a mile away. All of these green lights indicate particles passing through the germanium and silicon detectors that we saw downstairs. Uh, these are almost certainly all background particles, but maybe it's buried in there someplace as a whim. But we won't know until we analyze the data. Hunting dark matter is tedious. Each day, the Fermilab team reports to the underground lab, analyzes data, and perfects their ping pong game while waiting for the one hit that will prove dark matter exists. But for all this effort and waiting around, no dark matter has been detected by Fermilab or by anyone else. Unfortunately, we've seen precisely zero dark matter particles so far. Any day now, we may have the announcement that physicists have captured dark matter in a bottle. We have a, uh, a hypothesis. Uh, it certainly seems to explain the universe we live in. Uh, but the plain fact is we haven't yet detected this cold dark matter particle. Finding dark matter will not only give us proof of its existence, but might also answer the other big questions of space. Detecting dark matter directly will give us a window on what was going on one ten thousandth of a second after the Big Bang. If scientists can discover what dark matter is, they might also discover how the universe behaved early in its life. Dark matter is not only a mysterious quantity in the universe, but also it's fundamental to uh, our, you know, why we're here, in fact. It would be difficult to form galaxies and hence, you know, the solar system and hence life on Earth. The story of dark matter and dark energy can't be told without going back to the beginning of time, to the moment of the Big Bang, when space didn't exist. There is no center uh, where you can point to, and that's exactly the analogy for the Big Bang. There is no direction in the sky from which all the galaxies are expanding. From this moment of nothing to a violent explosion, space was created, and the universe began to grow from a seed. Particles formed in a nuclear fusion of gas and energy. Ordinary matter was reacting with other ordinary matter. The early universe was in fact a nuclear reactor when it was one minute old. And 380,000 years later, Bits of particles began to cluster, creating the seeds from which stars and galaxies would later form. Bigger lumps grow to form yet bigger lumps, and so gravity is slowly pulling force, uh, uh, bringing objects together. 
what scientists now realize was that at the moment of the Big Bang, dark matter was created. And it played a critical role in helping ordinary matter clump together to form stars and planets. Like steel girders used on a building site, dark matter's slow-moving particles acted like scaffolding upon which ordinary matter could attach itself. We believe that because it's cold and doesn't interact very much that dark matter was pulled together by gravity very slowly over time and actually formed the seeds around which normal matter coalesced into galaxies. It's like a cosmic web, like a spider's web, where there are strands of dark matter and where these strands intersect uh, like a scaffolding pattern. So in a sense the dark matter is the framework, it's providing the scaffolding uh, for the shining galaxies that we can easily see. You are really like the Christmas tree lights, they're not the actual Christmas tree, they're the things that are visible from very very far away. But the reality of a galaxy is a big halo, most of which you don't see. You see the shiny bits that are stars and planets that have accumulated the center of that large halo which is mostly dark matter. Scientists have long wondered why galaxies formed in seemingly random patterns across space. Now scientists know it's because of dark matter's gravitational pull. The universe is not uniform at all, but has voids, it has clumps, it seems to have bubble-like regions. What we now believe is due to dark matter. In the last year, astronomers have been able to take their theory one step further and create a detailed 3D map of dark matter in the universe using gravitational lensing. And Einstein said that gravity affects everything, just like gravity is caused by everything. So one of the things that is affected by gravity is light itself. Because when light goes through dark matter, it bends just the way light bends when it goes through glass. And light doesn't discriminate between ordinary matter and dark. Both types of matter batter light's path as it travels through galaxies. Like plotting a course on a map, astronomers have traced thousands of light sources as they pass through dark matter. It has given science the most accurate picture yet of where dark matter hides in space. We can compare that map of the dark matter with where the galaxies are. And lo and behold, we find that the dark matter is acting as the skeleton. It is the backbone around which the visible material is clumping. By mapping the universe, astronomers can also look back in time and predict how much matter was created at the Big Bang. So if you know how lumpy the universe appears now, and when it was half its current size, and when it was half its current size before that, you can infer the total amount of stuff in the universe. It gives us another very nice way of matching onto what we believe is the total amount of dark matter. It's estimated dark matter makes up 23% of the universe, while ordinary matter makes up only 4%. You need a lot of dark matter to account for the total amount of gravity that exists in these clusters and galaxies. But what makes up the final 73% of the universe? Scientists were shocked to discover a new mysterious dark energy was dominating space. And its repulsive energy is driving the galaxies apart.